Report here from uh, Monday night, everybody's uh, favorite segment here on the show. So we did have an announcement of the tag team tournament with brackets. So that is a that is an improvement that we had brackets. Now what those brackets were, that's another matter entirely. Because uh, forget the fact that we have some random hodgepodge team from NXT in the tournament. Uh, one side of the bracket, we've got uh, Io Sky and Dakota Kai and uh, Alexa Bliss and Asuka. Which, to me, that would be a great final. But they're both on the same side of the bracket. So, I presume EO and Dakota are going to the finals. So, the finals of this tournament at Clash of the Castle will be EO and Dakota versus either Raquel and Aaliyah, Zaya Lee and Shotzi, Nikita and Zoe, or Natty and Sonya. None of those matches feel bigger than... Uh, Io and Dakota versus Alexa and Asuka. And actually, I guess the, uh, now that I think about it, I guess that match, the finals aren't at Clash of the Castle because they did an angle at the beginning of the show where uh, Alexa, Asuka, and Bianca came out and Bailey and her crew came out and they agreed to have a six-woman match at, uh, at Clash of the Castle. So I guess that works if both teams are eliminated from the tournament and we just got a spoiler. But otherwise, I guess uh, the finals will end up on on Raw or something like that. So anyway, uh, that was the opening segment. The only funny thing is uh, a mistake that apparently I made, a mistake that Mike made, and now a mistake that uh, Bailey made, calling them EO and Dakota Sky. And then she had to correct herself that it's Dakota Kai and EO Sky. Maybe that EO Sky wasn't a good idea after all. So that was the opening segment. And we had a brawl, by the way, which, uh, you know, was the sooner they can get rid of whoever's responsible for those. I know everyone just uh, flat out says it's Kevin Dunn. And I'm sure that, you know, he's part of this. But I was told there are other people there that like the shaking and the zooming and the cuts. And that uh, you shouldn't expect that if Kevin Dunn left tomorrow, that it would suddenly we wouldn't have that anymore. People there like it. I have no idea why. It's absolutely horrible. It's vomit-inducing. You have no idea. You can't even see what's going on. It's like, why well, are you are you trying to cover for people missing punches or whatever? Okay, well, then maybe don't even have a brawl. Because I can't even see the brawl. You cut the camera so many times, so why even bother? Dude, they Horrific. cut the camera so many times that you end up catching, you know, huge whiffs and a bunch of, you know, light that comes through punches and kicks because they just randomly cut back and forth. So that happens anyway. It's ridiculous. And we had Seth Rollins and Angelo Dawkins. Last week, Seth Rollins beat Montez Ford. This week, Seth Rollins beat Angelo Dawkins. He beat both of them on successive weeks. So... I, I, I Listen, I shouldn't presume anything, but obviously Seth is being built up for the match with Riddle. Riddle returns next week. They'll do Clash of the Castle. And maybe maybe the storyline is that Angelo and Montez have tried going out on their own, and they didn't do well, so they've determined they'll redouble their efforts as a team. Because I don't want these guys to break up yet. I think they got a ways to go as a team. So I watched it. I saw the finish. I thought, there's a reason for this, but I don't know what it is yet. We'll uh, we'll find out. Match was pretty good. We had Edge and the Mysterios backstage. Edge was apologizing for accidentally spearing Dominic. Dominic wanted to hear none of it, and he shoves Edge, and uh, it storms off. And Ray says, "I'll go talk to my son." Kevin Owens destroyed Ezekiel. He beat him up. He power bombed him on the ring apron. Ezekiel sold it like his legs didn't work anymore. They brought out the. Uh, the stretcher, neck brace, stretchered him off. Owens did a promo afterwards saying he wanted to remind people who he was. So it looks like this Ezekiel thing may be done. Things don't look good for this guy, but things do look good for old Kevin Owens. Which is good because a strong, badass Kevin Owens is a good thing. Every once in a while doing the comedy, the stuff he did with Ezekiel shows off how good he can be. But him cutting hard promos, he, he, again... With Triple H coming on board right now for a guy like Kevin Owens, perfect. This is the best you can do with him is make him serious again, make him a threat. We had a promo with the Judgment Day, and uh, this led to uh, Ray telling Edge, I, I can't get a hold of Dominic. I'm going to go out there, and Edge says, well, if you need me, I'll be there. So it's Finn Balor versus Ray Mysterio. They got 14 minutes, 
And it was good early. It was great at the end. They got a real bunch of really cool spots. And uh, finally, Priest keeps trying to interfere. Edge runs down. He chases Priest through the crowd. Ray and Balor are in the ring together. And uh, Balor ends up, uh, he tries 619. Or, I'm sorry, he tries a coup de gras. Ray avoids it. He goes for the 619. Rhea drags Dominic's bloody body. They got uh, makeup on him. Look like he's bleeding. They drag him out on the ramp. Ray's distracted. Finn hits the 1916, the coup de gras for the win. We never saw Dominic actually getting beaten up. We only saw hit Rhea dragging him out there. So it looks like they are actually finally going to pull this trigger on the Dominic turn. And uh, and we'll see what they Why? end up doing. <laughs> Dude, it's the same thing. It's like, what more can we do with the Mysterios as a tag team? What's left? It's time to what do more something. What can you do with Dominic? I mean, honest to God. Turn him he, heel and try. I, I Try to do what? I mean, you better put a mask on him, cover him up, because going out there and getting yanked up by your hair in front of your family and getting yanked out of a room by Rhea Ripley, and I know that's a big woman, and she's strong, and she can beat up a lot of dudes. But, I mean, come on. And then you go out there, and you get dragged out there again. So we're, we're going to go another story with this guy being an acolyte for these people. And then Ray will probably end up saving him. I just I am not interested in Dominic Mysterio in the least. And by putting him in this storyline, sure, maybe it'll work. But well, yeah, if you're, not interested, have... if you're not interested in the least, we got to try something. You want to just see the same thing you don't care about over Send and over again? NXT. You want to bring up people from NXT? There's a guy who could probably use to go down there because what else are you going to do on the main roster? So he's a flunky on the heel side. So what? Well, let's see what happens. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe he'll be a great heel. I mean, <laughs> a lot of maybes we, in this hey, world. Hey, you know what? We got to yeah. try. I'd rather try making him a heel with this group than just send him down to NXT without even trying. Maybe he'll be a great heel. Who knows? We had uh, Sarah interviewing Tamina and Dana. My God, this promo. Holy smokes, Dana. This led to Io and Dakota versus Tamina and Dana, and uh, it's not very good. They are trying to have Tamina work like more stiff and, and mean, and uh, it was what it was. For They did have a spot where uh, Io was going to try a uh, the palm thrust, and bro, I don't know what happened, but... She did it about this fast. And they just kept going. I was like, what was that? So, anyway, she finally, uh, EO hit the moonsault. They win. They go on to face the winner of Asuka versus Dewdrop and Nikki. We had an Owens promo, and you could see in the background a car had crashed backstage. But uh, to their credit, they didn't call any attention to it. You had to be paying attention. And uh, Nikki and Dewdrop were checking on this car. I don't know why them. I guess she's a superhero. We Maybe had they just uh, happened to be there at the time. <laughs> Bobby Lashley versus Champa. So that afternoon, Champa did this tweet, and he said he was dedicating his match to Harley Race. So of course, Triple H is a huge idolized Harley Race, as you could tell by his facial hair for a few years, which looked fine on Harley Race and horrible on Triple H. And the high knee. And uh, they so they did that, and then. You know, when he dedicated it to Harley Race and came out in Harley Race's robe, I mean, I thought he was winning. And that was the idea. They wanted you to think that this is not just going to be the old Champa, the old main roster Champa just coming in here and doing the job or whatever. He's going to win. And so watching it, it was very clever. Like, they did all of these spots and... You know, Lashley would do this, and then Ciampa would hit it with his NXT finishers, and the re- and, and Lashley kicks out at the last second. And then they do a couple of other things, and then Lashley goes for the thing, and Ciampa kicks out, and you're like, okay, here it is. Ciampa hits another one. Lashley kicks out. And even at the very end, when finally there was another reversal, and Lashley got him in the hurt lock, they still had uh, Ciampa dance around the ring, and his, his foot's going like this. It's about to get on the rope. Then he tapped. I thought they did a great job. Because this entire match, I I had no idea who was going to win. And I thought it was going to be Ciampa. But uh, it was good. And this was the best thing they've ever done with Ciampa on the main roster. Match was good. Now give and him a win next week. Give him a win next hopefully week. Hopefully they do. Somebody. That's all I want. Look, you don't have to have him you know, face Lashley again. But give this guy some credibility back. Give him a big dub back You know, coming off that loss. That's how you should do it. And I think they did do a good job that way because... 
I was kind of convinced too, you're going to do all this dedication to Harley race, but to triple H's credit, you know, good, use it for the heat. But so your, your hero didn't actually, you know, the, the sire of your hero didn't actually end up winning the match. I thought that whole thing would turn out to be really good. Then we had Omos meeting two dudes. It was uh, whatever. I mean, this has nothing to do with Hunter, but he was a little better here. He did a he did a, a fine two on one handicap match, which three six months ago he couldn't do. So, I still don't want to see him wrestle like real matches. Progress. It is progress. <laughs> I don't know why everyone's so against progress. Progress okay, only counts if it's like give me you know, a break. A to the progress Z. of Omos. That's what you're gonna yell. No, I can't believe everybody. No, he is. Progress. He's gotten a little bit better. Dude. He shouldn't be there, Brian. I know he shouldn't be there, but he got a little bit better. Why is everyone so annoyed at the idea of getting a little because bit better? You're bitching and moaning about the possibility that Nikita Lyons and, and Zoe Stark could stand out, and then you go, well, on the, the same side, and you want to see new people come up, and then it's like, well, man, hopefully this works with Dominic. You got to do something. You do hopefully have to do something with Dominic. Almost, you got to do something. No, well, you yeah, you don't have to call them up from NXT in a hodgepodge match. Oh, if you match. don't have a big man Hollywood match for Omos that can get on ESPN or something like that, then he doesn't need to be there. Well, period. dude. MVP needs some new guys, period. Okay, fine. But, like, they hired him. They're paying him a lot of money. They're going to do something with him. I want to see him get better. I don't want to see the Omos from six months ago on my TV every week. I'm happy that he's getting a little bit better because I got to watch him every week. Dolph Ziggler and Chad Gable, six minutes. This match was great for six minutes. They did all amateur wrestling early. Then it turned into a pro wrestling match. And then in his hometown, Dolph Ziggler was slipped behind on an angle slam, and he super kicked the dude. He pinned him in the middle of the ring. And then Otis tried to get to him, and he got away. This was good. Then we had uh, AJ Styles versus The Miz. And... Uh, AJ Styles is great, and Miz was, uh, he was better than usual. Am I allowed to say that Miz is better than usual, or am I going to get yelled at for that one? I don't even like the guy! But he was better than usual in this match, and uh, they did all sorts of stuff, and finally he goes for the uh, figure four and had a skull-crushing finale, and uh, he goes for the kendo stick shot, figure four. Styles uh, kicks him into a chair in the corner, hits the Styles clash, pins him. And then I watched this on the West Coast. So all I heard all day was how subtle WWE was about the uh, debut of Dexter Loomis. So I'm watching it, waiting for this subtlety. And granted, there was subtlety earlier. The car crash was subtle. They did an angle backstage, and all of a sudden some cops run by. That was, that was fairly subtle. Bro, this was not subtle. There's a brawl in the crowd. AJ stops celebrating to rubberneck. He's staring at, oh, what's going on here? And then they grab Dexter Loomis, and Dexter's got the giant Dexter face as he's being pulled away. And the answer go, is that Dex? Dexter Loomis? I think it was Dexter Loomis. <laughs> I'm like, that was subtle! That's Bro, they hit me over the head with a cement block! But yes, Dexter Loomis is back. And speaking of getting hit over the head, I'm getting hit over the head with his music. All right, we're out of here. Back in a moment. Observer Live. Rusty. Rusty Rose, 10, 4, 86. <laughs> dusty. Is it Rusty or Dusty? <laughs> it's, uh, it's Dusty. Harmon Blanchett. <laughs> okay, out of ring. Her and Herman way, Blanchett. <laughs> Harwin. <laughs> way back then, they had cha chain barricades. <laughs> And then they had a tag team with Rich Fl uh, Rick Flair and some more guys, and so that was that. I'm just too who who <laughs> did Rusty Rhodes wrestle? If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.